Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, this is actually a device uh, that I made for taking dental x-rays of dead people. But, um, turns out the people that would actually use it and buy it aren't the people who have the ability to purchase it, and there's not that big of a market uh, for selling equipment that allows people to take uh, x-rays of dead people anyway. But if you would like to buy one, they are on my website at uh, www.lsmengineering.com or you can also use www.rpdholder.com uh, But right now, this is actually what, I'm, the reason I'm showing you this is because this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to clamp my phone in here and this is what I'm going to use to uh, disassemble uh, or to show you me taking apart this uh, switch for this DeWalt drill that broke. Um, so if you want to buy one for that, you know, feel free to email me too. Uh, so thanks. Okay, so this is the drill uh, that broke. <clears throat> and what happened was uh, something in the gearbox like basically sheared off and then it was causing an extreme amount of stress and it got really hot and then it just like seized up and wouldn't move anymore. So. Um, I was going to take apart this, uh, the control unit, so basically, you know, this is where the battery would connect, and then this went to the motor, and uh, this is the little light bulb that goes on in the front. So, um, I was going to take, took the screw out already, and I was just going to see what, uh, we could see what looks, what it looked like inside of this thing. Okay, so once I took that screw off, uh, basically, you have this diode here, and what that does is it saves the, uh, it, well it prevents like a voltage spike when you let go of it, uh, because there's a lot of inertia in the, in the motor and whatever, and if you don't have this diode, then uh, you can burn out components. Um, and this little metal, uh, it's actually a copper heat sink, which is, copper has a pretty high thermal conductivity. Um, is, uh, and they got the, uh, the thermal paste on here too. It looks like there's a little bit of pink stuff in there. I'm not sure what that's for. Um, it looks like, I don't know what that is. Is that for something arced? I don't know. A little bit of green goo or something. And then this is obviously the main uh, switching MOSFET, which is like uh, what regulates uh, how much power goes to the motor when you, you press this thing in and out or whatever. Um, so it's really impressive how compact this is and you know, how small the circuit is they're able to put in here with all this stuff. This is the going to be a temperature sensing wire. Um, this is, you know, the positive. Well, this, yeah, temperature sensing. This is the positive and negative um, and uh, from the battery and this is the output and you can see that they actually uh, ultrasonically welded these wires onto these tabs. It hasn't been soldered like it was over here. Um, but these are ultrasonically welded too. They didn't solder these, which is kind of interesting. They soldered this stuff, but not the other stuff. Um, eleven RA, eleven running amps, maybe. Eighteen VDC. It's a five times 4.2 is 21 volts and when it's dead it's got like three times five 15 volts so i mean 18 is right in the middle of there um but yeah well, i'll take see if i can take the rest of this apart and see uh what else is in there my guess is this is a switch for forward and reverse and then this is going to be some sort of potentiometer or something maybe an encoder i don't know that'll be interesting to see how they how they did that <coughs> And what, 11 amps at 20 volts is um, 220 watts. So that's a fair amount of power from, from a lithium battery. And I don't see any uh, American wire gauge rating on here, but this looks like, I'd say this was 16 gauge.
Okay, so I think this thing worked by just, this switch worked by just switching the, the polarity on the output contacts. Um, let's see what we got here. Mm. This thing had some wipers on it and a spring. So that obviously pushed in and then these wipers must have run across. I'm guessing that area right there. Focus. There we go. That area right there. Uh, it must have used something to know where that was. Maybe that shit. I don't know. There we go. Yeah, so here's a chip. Um, it looked like they were just switching the contacts. I kind of destroyed it when I was taking it apart. It looks like they were just switching the contacts, uh, the polarity with the uh, this switch, you know, the forward reverse, so on the output. And then it looks like the speed was controlled by these two wipers running across uh, this place right here. And the board doesn't look to be of the best quality. I mean, it looks like a pretty, you know, crappy soldering job. Components probably aren't that great. Let's see what's the name of this MOSFET. Can you read that? NKN? Oh, it's an international rectifier, IR. Alright, so it's a good, good good MOSFET, but I don't know. The board just, to me, doesn't, it's not like, I don't think it's conformally coated. You know, a lot of just open stuff. Well, maybe it is conformally coated, but like the, still looks like it could be susceptible to corrosion. Oh well. I guess all those are test points. I don't know why they'd have all those little solder pad things there. Huh. I think this was like the negative side and then all the electricity flowed through that diode. I don't know. Yeah, that's what it looks like inside one of these things. Thanks for watching.